Hey, this is John Young with the Weekend Handyman. Today we're going to be repairing some kitchen chairs. These are some solid oak kitchen chairs, and they both have an issue. One has, I'll just hold it up here a little bit, it has where the support rungs have come apart. Now, depending upon what type of chairs you have, some are just glued together, and in this particular case, they're glued and supposed to be pinned with a, a finishing type nail, actually a staple and they didn't get the staples in properly. So one out of, I think, eight chairs, 10 chairs, 10, 10 chairs that we have, the rungs are coming apart. So we're going to take these apart and show you how to put these back together and make it so that they're going to be solid. And in this particular case, we're going to have to take and put the glue in at the joints and then put them together and then pin them so they will stay together. So let's jump right into our project today. So for today's project, we're going to be using a variety of different tools. I've got a couple of different clamps. One clamp I'm going to use to clamp the chair to this table so it doesn't slide off. And then we're going to need a little bit longer clamp to be able to pull things together so we can get those spindles and such all set while we're getting our little nails set. We're going to need a screwdriver of some sort because there's a legs on there that we're going to see if we need to take those apart and try do anything with those. They could, you could use a Phillips head or in this case we're going to use a square head. And of course I've got my full complement of bits here that we're going to be using and I already checked and it will be using a square. A little Ryobi kit there. We're going to be using a hammer. Now this is a smaller hammer. This is more of a kid's hammer we'll call it for lack of a better way to describe it. I wanted something small because I don't want to have a big one where I'm going to miss and damage the chair and I don't really want to be hitting a ton of putting a ton of force on this. I want it to be more of a tap tap than a bang bang. We'll need a nail set. At the very end we're going to need to set those nails into the wood. The nail that we're going to be using are little finishing nails about uh, probably 5 8 inch finishing nails and I'm going to need to drill a pilot hole. I've got my little Ryobi drill bits here. We're going to be using a, a 1 16th inch drill bit. Uh, the diameter of that. Now I'm going to show you this. This is one of the cool little things you can do is that in the box we can see that that it fits and there's a little bit of play. We're going to turn it around and you can see that the head of the screw will not go in that little hole on the 1 16th. It, too big. That means that it's the right size for this application. If it's too, uh, too big the nail won't hold. If it's too small in oak we're not going to be able to get the nail in. So I want to make it so I can get this in and then at the very end it's going to catch, bite into the wood, and then it'll allow me to set it and it'll stay there. Because these are basically going to pin those spindles together. Uh, one of the spindles has a nail that's hanging. We're going to use a, a needle nose to kind of bend it out or to cut it, either way. I'm gonna need to drill for my drill bit, so I get my little Ryobi drill. And then we're going to, of course, need some wood glue to re-glue those joints. So this is the tools we're going to be using. A uh, damp washcloth to wipe up our glue mess. A uh, little paper towel to dry off the the um, moisture from our washcloth when we're wiping up the glue mess. I think we're ready to go. Let's get the chair up here on the table and let's get to work. So for this part of our video, we're going to be going and attaching our spindles that have come loose here. And you can see that we have two that are loose here. We have one in the back, right back here, that is loose. And then we have, of course, on the side over here, we have some play on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to see if we can take this apart over here so we can get these out. The glue is broken on this side. There's no question about it. The glue is not making contact anymore. The question becomes is those little fine nails or pins they put in, if they're going to cause trouble over here. We may end up having to, we'll try to pull this apart easily and if it doesn't pop apart easily, we may just have to leave this and then just adhere this side and go from there. Now, you probably can't see it very well, but down here, right in here there is a little nail that had come through and uh, we're gonna have to clean and get this nail trimmed out of here so the first thing I want to do is get my screwdriver and see if we can loosen these up a little bit get a little bit of play and if these can come apart now when I loosen the screws up on the chair it could be a Phillips or it could be a square head whenever possible use the square head which I'll show you here let me see where is it right there you take a look at that. It's a square head as opposed to the Phillips screw head. When you can do it, that will give you a stronger connection with the screw. So we're going to back these two out. That one I'm not going to do too much with because I'm afraid that that one is, is going to snap on me. Well, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. They seem to be solidly in the chair up here. And there's a little bit of play here, but I believe they're the metal, the wire nails are still holding. So we're just gonna put this back together 
and then move on to the next part because the screws obviously are doing their job on the seat and the glue is still good there. It's just that the glue popped on the one side here. And just wanna make sure we run that screw right back in. So now our next thing is we need to cut this little, trim this little piece of wire off right here so we can get this all put back together. Most of the time, little nails like this, you can try to pull them through and you can try to cut them. But I'm just going to use a little needle nose and wiggle a little bit and it should, should break it right off. Or we'll try to just cut it here. There we go. Just we were able to cut that. So now the next step is to put a little glue on these joints and put them back together and pull the chair back together. For this part, of course, we're going to need our wood glue and then we're going to need to have a wet washcloth. And I've got a little paper towel so we can dry things off. We are going to put the glue on both pieces and then assemble them. And once you put them together, we're gonna to have some glue that's, that is going to squeeze out. Now you're not seeing it on the camera, but when I'm working on something on one of these little four foot tables right here, you can kind of see, I've got to clamp down. Because if I don't clamp it down, it's gonna slide right off the table and I don't want to have that. So we're going to get our glue going here. A little bit on the end of both of the, all three of these. And then I'm going to put some inside. And there's going to be some that's going to squeeze out and make a little bit of a mess, and I get that. For those watching that glue drip, yes, it's going to drip. And I'm going to just basically use my finger to kind of rub it around to get everywhere. So I want to get glue all the way around these spindles. And again, we're going to be using, we're going to be using uh, a wet washcloth to wipe everything up when we're done. This method works, works, of course, if you're doing raw wood or, in this case, pre or finished wood, that you can go and you use the wet washcloth when you're done and clean it up. Not too wet. You don't want to leave water standing. You want to basically be able to wash, rinse it, wipe it off with that wet cloth, and then you're good to go. So now we'll put these spindles back into place here. So all three are now lined up, and now we're going to squeeze them together. Wash my finger off a little bit, and we're going to catch some of this glue that's dripping. So once we push the spindles into the into those little cups, those little holes, we're going to have a little bit of glue squirting off. So we'll pull these tight. So I'm going to use a bar clamp here and set that so it can suck this in. This seems to be kind of my my spot right here. So I'm going to put some pressure on with a bar clamp and that's going to suck this joint right in there nice and tight. So we're going to do this one first. We'll take our little 1 16th inch drill bit. Get it lined up. Okay, so now I'm gonna take and check this out. I wanna show this to you. Here's the drill bit, and here's my finish nail I'm going to use. If I set them on top like this and compare them, the drill bit and the nail are just about the same length almost identical in length right now. And I would like it so that that drill bit would stop about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch short, so I'm not going to go all the way down when I drill my little pilot hole. And I want to go from the bottom and I want to make sure that I'm hitting, so I'm going to kind of cheat over this way just a little bit to make my my hole to start. And then I'm going to carefully go straighten this out. And 
they'll just kind of carefully drill that hole out. Okay, now we have our hole. I didn't go all the way down, so my nail should be able to go in that hole and get to about there. And now I'll take my little hammer. And put that in there, and now that little nail is now holding that joint completely together. Now, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but I wanna get my glue joints done first. Because this side, I lost the glue, but we know it's still holding. I will get to that side in just a bit. But I wanna suck everything back, everything together on this side. And we'll do the same, same thing where we're going to come to the side and we wanna go in at a fairly perpendicular to the round and then we'll slowly straighten up and then go right on in. And these are very fine drill bits, so we don't want to be putting too much pressure on them. So if we start putting too much force on them left, right, or even in, they will break. There we go. And I'm going to use a nail set here in just a little bit to finish those, but they're pretty much in where we want them to be. Now the final one back here, I don't want to come from the back side of the chair. I want things kind of hidden, so we're going to actually come from the inside part of the chair to get that one. So we'll move a couple of things here. Put the clamp there. It's really not doing much because of the chair and, and the other ones are already all secure. But I'm just going to give it a little bit more stability. And I've got some glue mess here, so we're going to wipe that up. As we wipe it up now, and again, we don't want to have it too wet, because if we have it too wet, the glue will actually wash the joint apart. And I want to put just that little nail just to pin it in here. And then we'll take our nail set and just put that on top of that nail head and give it a couple of sharp hits. A couple of sharp taps. And that will set that nail down below the wood surface just far enough where it's not going to be feelable and that noticeable. And that is it. Our chair is now repaired. We're not going to put any weight on it for, uh, for a day. We're going to let that glue dry and we'll clean it up just a little bit more because as you can see some more has squeezed out a little bit. But our chair is good to go from the top. It looks absolutely fabulous. And it's going to be secure and steady once that glue all dries and, and good for back in the kitchen. Make sure that when you're done, you dry off all the spots where you were wiping. You were, make sure you dry the spots where you were getting a little wet because you don't want that water to sit on your finish. That's not a good thing for it. And then of course, check it about a half an hour after you glue it because some of the glue might have continued to squeeze out and you want to make sure you get all of that cleaned up so it isn't kind of a bumpy thing that you have to look at for the rest of your life. This is John Young with Weekend Handyman. For more tips and how-to videos, go to weekendhandyman.com.